Are you guys ready? Okay. And this is about flat Earth. It is about flat, flat Earth. Earth. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. That's right. Just want to oh, make sure I got all my stats here. Yep. yep make sure you got big your. Turtle. Yep. If you wanna be in the know about how we put together our little show, if you like to hear the puppeteers play the characters that you cheer, so join us as we go, 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 go. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Below the Frame. I am Matt Vogel, and uh, man, it has been a long time, but I guess that we are back for season three of Below the Frame, the uh, podcast where I talk to other Muppet performers and other folks who are either in the Sesame Street Muppets or Disney Muppets uh, universes, or both, or something like that. Um, If you're new to the podcast... You might want to go back and listen to the earlier stuff first. We have over three dozen episodes that uh, we released uh, going way back to August of 2020. Uh, it was a bit of a year. But anyway, we got to talk with uh, oh Muppet performers like Dave Goles and Bill Beretta, Stephanie DeBruzzo, Joey Mazzarino, uh, Peter Lintz, Fran Brill, John Tartaglia, Leslie Carrara Rudolph. We talked to folks from the Muppet Studio. We talked to Kirk Thatcher, Jim Lewis. We talked to many, many people. And um, of course, we started, or I started this version of Below the Frame during the pandemic in 2020. But Below the Frame goes back even earlier, if you don't know, to a live version that we did on Facebook. And we did that uh, starting in 2016, that we would do live during our lunch times at Sesame Street. And uh, we did three seasons of that kind of lunchtime show, which was really fun. And it was kind of different than than the audio version here for the podcast. And then um, then we did the two seasons of the podcast, which had like, you know, a word from our sponsor. And it had, you know, cool stuff from Jerry Nelson, like Jerry stories and Jerry songs in it. But we're going to change the format up a little this time. Season three of Below the Frame. Uh, It's going to be a little looser. It's going to be a little less fretted over, which is a totally a me thing. Um, Gone are the word from our sponsors for now. Uh, But I wouldn't count out a visit from my son, Jack, who who, uh, would come on the podcast uh, every episode. We are also moving on from the Jerry songs and stories because, you know, we've told you most of those stories that Jerry left us and uh, that his friends um, read over the course of the podcast so far. And uh, Jerry's music is available out there for you to listen to. Uh, if I come across anything that uh, is has not been released, I will I'll I'll include it maybe. But so this season, like I said, this season of Below the Frame is going to be a little looser. Uh, I mean, in fact, I didn't know that I was going to be doing a season three of Below the Frame uh, until maybe f- a week ago or so when I texted my guests today and ask them if they would be available to come on to talk about our topic. So there you go. Um, Let's bring in our guests. Hey there, Bradley Freeman Jr. and Lucas Ross. Please welcome to Below the Frame. How are you? Thank you. Hi. Long time listener. Yeah. First time First time talker. (laughs) First time talker. First time long time. Uh, So the two of you uh, got to join me uh, in Austin uh, a few weeks ago to do uh, the luck reunion at Willie Nelson's ranch, which was awesome. Uh, just briefly for those who are listening and may not know who you are, uh, just tell us who you are in a kind of a nutshell. Lucas, tell, tell us who you are. I'm a guy. I'm just this, a guy. This is mostly, by the way, so that I can remember who you are. So, um, <laughs> Lucas, you go first. Okay. I'm a, I loaned you several million dollars. Oh. And I'm here to re. I'm here to. Re- that's me. Your pen- Just to remind you. Okay, I'm I gotta his lawyer. Write this. I better. Write and this. he, Bradley's my lawyer. Yeah, you write this down. Write it down. Um, Matt. Yes. My name's Lucas, and I uh, am. I, I do entertainment stuff out of Oklahoma, and I work with the banjo, and I work with the American Banjo Museum, and I play the banjo, and uh, I love uh, all things Henson, and somehow landed at Kermit's uh, doorstep or log or whatever he Holy lives. Pad. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. played you played the banjo, for example, on the there was the pandemic uh, rainbow connection that we did. 
We did a, yeah. a schoolhouse rock. Uh, uh, what was the? We did oh, adjectives. Right. Was yeah. it adjectives? Uh, yeah. Unpack, Unpack your, your adjectives. adjectives. And yes. some other stuff too. So and some other. You things wrote the song for the, the 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 watch that we did for Oris watches. You wrote the song that well, Kermit sings. Well, I right? thought I did until oh. I saw their their pamphlet showed oh. that Kermit wrote it, and that oh. was even a that was even a bigger <laughs> honor that he stole. Yeah. He, if you're gonna steal, credit. you know. Good to have Kermit steal from you. Uh, Bradley, remind yes. me who you are, please. Uh, I it, well, in a nutshell, I <laughs> yes, thank you. It's got lots thank of you, props. Texas Roadhouse. Lots um, of props. I <laughs> uh, I am a Muppet performer with uh, Sesame Street, and sometimes with the Disney Muppets. Um, and uh, I, I I do puppets with you, Matt. Oh right, that's who That's you my are. Whole thing. That's my oh whole my thing. gosh! Uh, you're right. You, I totally forgot. Uh, but now I remember, and um, we got to do something super cool. Uh, March 14th, we were at Willie Nelson's ranch outside of Austin, Texas. We got to do the Luck Reunion, which is a music festival that's held on the grounds of Willie Nelson's ranch, right? Um, uh, and I, you know, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna say how we were invited. Because I don't know if the both of you, I think you guys know. And then I'm going to ask how, you know, no. how you, think how you were invited. Okay, so last I summer, didn't know we were. Yeah, we know I'm we were. No, know we that didn't they just show up. There. We didn't just show oh, up okay. unannounced. No, they, they knew we were That's not as coming. fun. I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so last summer, um, last summer, summer of 2023, we were in Newport, in Newport, Rhode Island, at the Newport Folk Festival, which I had done previously. I think it was in 2019 with Kermit. And uh, but we were there this time with uh, Animal and Floyd, uh, and we were making some secret appearances with some different bands at the festival, like uh, My Morning Jacket and Goose. Goose. And I had the uh, the the privilege and honor of of uh, being Floyd at Tyler Childers' private show, which was at this tiny tiny bar. Uh, there were probably a couple of hundred people there in this bar. And I got to play Floyd, and Tyler's playing his set, and he brings me out um, in full full view of the audience, and I'm just standing there in front of everybody. And we sing, we sang one of Tyler's songs called uh, "Country Squire," and then we, the cool part was then Tyler and his band played "Gonna Get There," which is from the Electric Mayhem album and oh, from wow. the series. Uh, and so we got to do that. It was really, really cool. It's from, uh, and that song was from uh, the Muppets Mayhem, all episodes streaming on Disney Plus. Season two. Yeah. Season, Season two. Uh, boy, I got some news for you. I'll tell you. Do we get what? to say it? Oh, we get to say the news you. now? No. It's so well, exciting. Uh, oh, boy. my gosh. I'm so sorry, you guys. I'll, it's a little possibility, right? I'll, I'll, Why are you I'll sorry about season two? I'll text That's you. That's right nothing right but now. exciting. I'll, Oh, I'll okay. text you. I'll text you. I don't so want to do it here in front of this. I know, I know. Anyway, that night we yeah, were... won all those awards. <laughs> I did. I know. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? How a show can be so beloved and win so many awards and then. Anyway, uh, that <laughs> night we were <laughs> we were approached by Matt Beiser, who is the uh, he's the executive producer. He's the creative director. He's the founder of the Luck Reunion. And he came over to Michael Steinbach, who is from the Muppet Studio. And I actually, I invited Michael to come on the podcast today, but he, he was not available to come uh, be with us. But he did send a text because I was like, just remind me how this really happened. And he said that we were approached after the performance at, with Tyler Childers to see that, uh, to see if um, there was maybe a chance of making something happen with Willie Nelson down at his ranch. And so they set a meeting for a week later and then Michael, he pitched Kermit and Rainbow Connection. And Matt loved the idea, but he said, you know, Willie performs a specific set and we'd have to run it by his team. And their response was like, hard yes. Like it was like, <laughs> it was a very enthusiastic yes. And so, uh, you know, when we found out that we were going to do Rainbow, uh, both Michael and I thought, man, we should see if Lucas can do this. So, Lucas, when was the first time that you heard about coming down to the Luck Ranch, and what did you think about it? Well, the first... It's weird, Matt. I have been so excited about every opportunity. Anytime I see you, I get a text from Michael or you saying, hey, can you talk? I'm like, who? <laughs> Have I done something wrong? Did I post something I wasn't supposed to? <laughs> right, right. Uh, and uh, and so Michael, I think it was in January, but 
yeah, it was like early, mid-January maybe. But my goal this year, Matt, was to play banjo live for Kermit sometime this year. Wait, really? That was my goal. Really? Yeah, like I was like, I really want to be able to do it. I mean, because every project... Now, realistically, for those listeners out there that know Kermit is real, um, there are some non-believers that don't understand how this works and just helps their brains to know that there's yeah. a guy standing back there holding a banjo right. and it just helps right. him sleep better at night. Cause whatever. Right. Right. But, um, I, I, uh, that was like, that's my dream. And I, there's ideas and things I want to do with possibilities at the American banjo museum or all these other things and yeah. stuff. Anyway. So it was really weird when Michael texted me, he's like, Hey, we're looking for some banjo. And I was like, okay, awesome. I'm going to maybe pop back in the studio to record. Cause I'd never actually worked in person with Kermit. I right. had always sent my pieces to him for his approval. Um, <laughs> so when he said, yeah, it's going to be a live event. It's going to be in Texas and uh, around Austin. And I was thinking like, okay. And he told me the dates to, but he wouldn't tell me anything else. He's like, I can't say anything else right now. It's like, okay. So I, of course I'm starting to calculate. Okay. I'm guessing this is kind of like the Newport folk festival from a couple years ago. So I started just like, watching that video that like any videos I could find and learning it, learning it and being, being ready to do whatever. But also, uh, I was thinking, Oh, this has to be South by Southwest because it's going on in March. It's the same right. thing. And so there was a couple of weeks, maybe, I don't know, a month went by before I ever knew. <laughs> and I think I texted you once being like, I know I can't say anything yet, but if this happens, this is going to be awesome. And I was like, and what are you talking back, about? And you're like, what are you talking about? I was like, Oh no, he doesn't know. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, so whenever he he called me back to let me know what the whole plan was and everything, and uh, that was amazing. I, I couldn't so I couldn't believe it, but as much as it, it's cool to, to get to do something like this with Willie Nelson, who's so iconic and stuff, I mean, I was, no, no offense to Willie, but I was really more excited <laughs> about getting to work with Kermit. <laughs> Willie has recorded the song before, like in 2001 or something like that for his for record, yeah. and um, you know, the, the, the versions that they do that Kermit does and that Willie does, they're, they're different. Very different. Yeah. Can you tell how they are different? There's a couple different ways that they are. That well, they are it's really interesting and special too. I didn't know Willie did a version of this. Oh, you never we knew? had, I didn't until just, uh, around the fall of last year, we had some very sweet neighbors next door who, um, their her husband Bruce was dealing with an illness for a very long time, and I'd sit and play banjo in my backyard, and he'd open his window and listen. And so I did mm. I entertain him in his final days. And one of the last times I went over to play for him, he said, uh, "I know you got to know Rainbow Connection. You do know Willie Nelson does a version of that, and I love it so much. This is my favorite version." And I didn't know because of that. So this whole thing has been an interesting wow Rainbow Connection wink for me personally because he was a really great guy. And so I got into it because of him and I started listening. But yeah, um, so Rainbow Connection is typically performed in the key of A. That's traditionally how it was in the 79 um, uh, movie. I can't think of the name of it. Titanic. I think it is the Muppet Titanic. movie. I've heard of that. Yeah, that's the one. And uh, <laughs> that's how you perform it as well. That's how yeah. we did it for uh, that. Now, so a banjo, a five string banjo, which is what most people play, is typically keyed in, in tuned in G. Mm. And I'm not sure, and I don't want to throw this out there, but I might get some flack, but I believe that the banjo they recorded the Muppet movie oh. uh, on, it was either a plectrum or it might have been a guitar banjo. It has a very low, low resonant sound that hits. And so a lot of people think, if I can get nerdy for a second, Please the do. melody is da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da, and that's not actually it from the original. It's like a lower, ball, 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 ball. Now I can't do it. Wow. You have to cut this I'm part sure out. It goes to. Do, I'm, not, do, I'm do, definitely do, not do, cutting do, this do, out. <laughs> Please keep all of it. In. I, I've got t- I've got six banjos right here I next to me, and I'm singing it. Yeah. Um, but it's like duh. Well, can you do it on the duh. banjo? There it is. Can you play it on you the? You want band? me to? Yeah, just kind of just the beginning. Don't do too much. Yeah. I don't know how much we can do or not do before we get pinged or something. I, I don't even if know you're what playing, pinged if means. If you're playing it live, I think you can do it. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's Bradley. So Bradley, are you a lawyer for podcasts? I'm his lawyer. Oh, for, yeah, for that's what this owe. whole thing's about. All oh, right. So I've got tuned in G. So a lot of people think it's this. Can you hear it? Yeah. That's what a lot of people sing it as, and they've right. even played it that way. When Kermit played with Debbie Harry 
Um, and other times, that's how they did the intro for it. Mm-hmm. Because that's comfortable on a G banjo. Yeah. But the actual style of it would have been lower to sound more like this. You hear that low? Yeah. And I didn't even do that correctly on the uh, on the pandemic one because I hadn't educated myself as much as oh. I have now. But I didn't Willie's say. version is so low. I know. <laughs> Willie's version is an E. Oh. And okay, that was a perfect a key. That was a perfect key that that would do it and make it sound close to it. He also doesn't change the the, the pitch doesn't no move up. There's no or modulation. modulation. Yeah, no modulation. Mm-hmm. So what um so, so what does it sound like in E if you just play the top? If you remember. Uh, do you remember? Let me get my uh, Oh. He's got to change. Get my capo got it. Oh yeah, he's got a capo. It. That's just stick it on. She's Bradley's like I I've been. Know. I was late for this thing, and now they're not even talking to me. Well, now everybody knows I'm late. <laughs> oh, sorry. Great. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Of course. Oh, oh yeah. So here's the key. Here's how I did. Yeah. Okay. Man, you could do a lot more with it there. That sounds like. Uh, I don't know. I, I loved getting to play it that way. And the fact there was no step up. Because that's one thing I learned was when we played with Willie and them, like, and, and watching him the night before, he uh, he just kind of goes with whatever. Yeah. And I was trying to, like, really... I, and I thought, well, at least I'll have the guitar there to to cradle me. Now, keep and yeah, that hold that, another, hold that, hold that, hold on. We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so so it's like the, it's in a different key. There's no different modulation. Key. But you kind of were like, what key we're going to do it in? And I was like, I don't know. I'm assuming whatever Willie does it in. Yeah. And, Which but, was helpful because if I wouldn't have known to do that, I would have, I just wouldn't have been a conf- as confident about it, I think. But you said, and c- correct me if I am wrong here, you said, I can play it in any key. I'm a liar, Matt. I'm a liar. <laughs> really? No. I mean, you no, could have, no, you I, just did well, I could have for the most it or part. whatever, right? You just. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. And, and I would have figured out a way. If I needed to go and retune it all down to make yeah. it comfortable for me but sound right, my biggest thing was I was trying to make sure I was ready in case for anything. If yeah. they were like, hey, Kermit, can you play dueling banjos right now? I had to be like, well, they'll probably do it in G, and that's a oh big gosh. change. Really? So I was trying to like calculate and. Uh, and then it didn't you know, happen. Never. That was okay. But I was but ready. You were ready. You were ready. It's good to just be ready. Just in case. It's good to be ready. <laughs> you know, banjo playing, that's hard enough, a playing just as a person. Uh, but imagine if you were a frog and you had to play a banjo. Uh, you know, so we all knew that we would need somebody to help us out with that uh, so that I could focus on the singing and the lip syncing part with the Kermit, the frog puppet. So, uh oh, he just turned off his. What happened? Oh, there you go. You you left for a second. Oh, you're back. There we go. You just completely left, Bradley. But I was I was, I was just getting ready. I was saying, yeah, we. I know so it was we, a really sick segue too. It was a it's really a good really, segue yeah. too. <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna fix it. But anyway, we we thought we would ask you, Bradley, when. So when did you hear about this? Like how far in advance of the show? And what were your thoughts about performing? Like literally a few feet at yeah. the feet of. Willie Nelson, not to mention Kermit right. Frog. Yeah. Um, I found out, I want to say it was February or something. Mm-hmm. I was I was on a quick trip, quick trip home. Uh, like I had like a three days where I got to go back home to San Antonio for a little bit. And, uh, of course, one of those special moments when, when you get a text from Michael is like, hey, time yep. for a talk. I'm like, always, of course. Uh, and uh, talked to him for a second, and he said, uh, you know, hey, we have this opportunity to maybe uh, do some stuff with, with Willie Nelson and blah, 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 and it's going to be up in Austin. Are you so. doing a Michael imitation? That's a really good is Michael. That, is that oh, what you're doing you. right now? Sort of, yeah. Is that a Michael? Of. Yeah, that's, that's my Michael. <laughs> hey. That's really uh, good. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Just, thank you. Uh, and so, <laughs> pretty good. so he was asking, Hey, like, you, you know, could, Hey Matt, you could have him be on the podcast maybe, after all. Oh, we can do it. Yeah. yeah. You can ask Michael uh, some if questions Michael after. were here. Uh, <laughs> I think it would sound a little something. Yeah, so you like found this. <laughs> My rich little, uh, so I, um, oh, boy. uh, so that's my time folks. Um, so I yeah. was like, I was like, yes, of course. Um, always, you know, and it's like, 
the moment somebody called, just imagine, right? Just back up for a second. Imagine you're okay. a Muppet fan, okay? Yeah. I know. Let's put ourselves in that mindset. Got and I've got nothing. You, you've been <laughs> and you've been a Muppet <laughs> Muppet fan since you were a child, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and as a child, you also grew up in Texas. Okay. And so you do, you know, it's definitely not just like horses and cows running around and stuff, but there are, there is something called Texas Roadhouse. Uh, and in Texas Roadhouse, in every ro- in every restaurant, in every restaurant, yep. there is a <laughs> corner that is dedicated to Willie Nelson. There's a, there's a booth table that's called Willie's Corner, and it's got pictures of him all over. Funny enough, that was my introduction to him. Uh, and, and I really can remember, like, those are the times when I would sit there and I'd be on my phone and I would be like watching, I don't know, like Muppet Show live from Muppet Fest or something, like sitting at the Willy booth or something. Now, did that actually happen? No, but that's the kind of thing that like (laughs) would have been, you know, that where I was at in my mind. And then I, who doesn't love Willie Nelson? I mean, what a legend. And then you get the call saying, Hey, do you want to play banjo for Kermit doing Rainbow Connection? With Willie Nelson. Live. How, live. <laughs> in front of like a few yeah. thousand people. How yeah. can your answer be anything except yes? Well, d- you know, I would have thought, well, I don't know how to play the banjo. But then you meant puppeteering. You meant the puppeteering. Well, puppeteering. Part. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, for, yeah like, yeah. I don't I don't play the banjo. Uh, but of right. course, puppeteering. And then you I also. I, you could just always it. say yes. Yeah. But yeah. Always say yes you'll you'll be you fine. Learn. I did that in high school. They were like, do you walk on stilts? I was like, of course I do. And then I did a whole gig where I walked on stilts for the marching band. But that's a separate point. Oh I had my to gosh. Learn. Um, and so it was just like one of those, I've had a couple of those moments so far in my career. And um, in all of my year of doing stuff with the Muppets and <laughs> Sesame Street, there's been a couple of like pinch me moments. Yeah, real quick. I just want to just, this was a really special event. And you said, you know, who doesn't, know or love who Willie Nelson is. So Willie Nelson means a lot to me uh, because my dad loved Willie Nelson. And so my dad's no longer around, but I thought that not only I was going to bring Kelly with me, my wife, but I also thought maybe I'll ask my brother, Jason, to come along. So because it it was just, you know, if my dad would have been around, my dad would have been there. <clears throat> so I asked my brother Jason to come along and he and, and his partner Maria came down with us. But um, Bradley, you had a guest as well, correct? Yes, my girlfriend came came down. That's right. We were about an hour away. Yeah, and what was her reaction to this whole crazy thing? Oh my gosh, she never gets to do stuff like this. <clears throat> uh, and she was, and she's also, it's one of those things where um, I, I usually, my home base is San Antonio but I go and work in all of these other magical lands to do this magical mm-hmm. job. So for a, for the longest time, I kept thinking like, ah, she, she might think that I'm lying to her very elaborately <laughs> because she has no like it's actual complex. proof that I do any of this. <laughs> right. Uh, and so this was the first time that she actually got <clears throat> to like see me work with uh, the Muppets and, and Sesame, just in general. Like even when she came up to see the Macy's parade, she somehow missed the float. So I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah, it happens. Um, it happened twice. And so, oh, um, I know. And so I was like, you know what? If I if we put you in an audience and sit you in front, maybe you'll actually get to see it. So, yeah. um, so she was just over the moon. And, you know, we all got these amazing passes. So we had moments to get away from the crowd and, and go backstage yeah. and just sit for a while. And the first Muppet that she ever got to meet was Kermit the Frog, which Not is, bad. I mean, that's a good start. Yeah. And it's all and Luke, uphill from there. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Lucas, you brought your wife Aubrey. How did um, she like visiting that's the ranch? Who I yeah. thought I recognized yes. her. Oh no, yeah, you brought yeah, you brought <laughs> yes. Aubrey. Uh, oh. How did she like visiting the ranch and hanging out with the frog and these Muppet performers well, and uh, you, know. you know, I've got to do a lot of crazy different things over the years, and our um, marriage, she hitched her wagon to a crazy adventure of weird <laughs> things that I've done from traveling in places. But a lot of times for work and stuff, she never got to go with me because she's with our boys when they were younger and different mm-hmm. things. And I didn't, I assumed she wasn't, I didn't even think that she would be able to come much less, uh, maybe wanted to, not that she didn't want to, but anyway, she was like, uh, I'm going with you on this. You know, I was like, okay. awesome. 
And uh, so it was so cool to for her to witness uh, that whole thing and get to be there too. And she also got to meet Kermit. Mm. Uh, it was magical. Yeah, it's fun. I got you... to meet Kermit. Matt, yeah, I had right. never You'd actually never met, met him. I didn't even realize it because it just seemed like, because we did that video for the Banjo Museum uh, where I did my part in LA and you did your part at the museum and then they put it together through movie so magic in hollywood we yeah. have, we go a little bit further back yeah because this is big hollywood time uh, right stuff right here. right but yeah that was the first my actual first real encounter with kermit talking and referencing me was with willie nelson as well it was uh what? at that rehearsal and oh, uh, yes. kermit, well, yeah. kermit was throwing shade at me and i well. love it like what a great introduction <laughs> it was loving yeah. it was loving uh it was great um, well, we'll get to that in a second here. We'll, we'll talk oh, yeah, about the rehearsal day now. Well, I, I was going to say, though, it's really great. We get to do all these great things in this job, right? And and the best part of it is when you can share those moments with somebody that is close to you and special to you. And that's why yeah. I was so glad that you both were able to bring somebody special with you and that I was able to bring some special people with me as well. I, I do want to say something about Aubrey. So for years, she has done a done a nonprofit in Africa. And a few years back, it was right around the time. Mm, I can't remember. It was it was in between the pandemic, before and after. I think we went in windows. And mm -hmm. uh, when I go over there with her, she's there building hospitals and saving kids and stuff. And yeah. I'm playing the banjo and drawing yeah. Kermit yep. with children. <laughs> You know, the important stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I tell people I, I'm riding her coattails to heaven that we'll get there and they'll be like, Aubrey, we know you. Lucas, you play the banjo, you're booked in the other place. Get in the elevator. Oh, you have an accordion. Oh, they're going to hate that. Bring that. But um, but when we were there, so every time we go, I, I, have, I, have, I have a terrible anxiety. And for years, each time I would go, she's been there 15 times, but I would just like the day before I'd be like, I don't think I can do it. I don't think we can do this. We can't leave our kids. What if something happens? Uh, and I just have to like verbalize it. And she's in a place where I'm leading a team of 15 people. I can't have you act in this way. And this one trip, <laughs> it was right in between the time that I had not too long after I'd kind of met with you, Matt, and, and worked a little bit back and forth, but, um, that, uh, it was a night before we were going and I was freaking out and she said, mm -hmm. this is it. Don't go if you can't go, but don't talk to me about it because I can't. And so I was like, okay, I'll be good. So we get there. I'm keeping it all to myself. I'm, I'm okay. And we get there and it works out great. The art teacher, I'm doing this banjo stuff. And then she's like, hey, can you teach the kids how to draw? And I'm like, I'm not really an artist, but I can teach them how to draw Kermit. So I get all these kids drawing Kermit. So pretty soon all the kids are all wanting to draw Kermit. They're drawing just a simple, you know, diamond Kermit shape. And I've sent you a couple of Kermits yeah. over the years, Matt, but after that was all over with, I believe uh, somebody, and I don't want to divulge too much, but I guess you shared it with Lee at uh, yeah. at Muppet Studio, yeah. and they send a very special, sweet greeting of Kermit for those kids there. Yeah. That and so when we came back, and I was just like floored, like no way, Kermit like sent me a message to, <laughs> to show the children, and Aubrey goes. Now are you happy you went? And I said yes. She's like, you got your little Kermit thing, so now let's get to work. And so, so she's tied in, and Kermit's tied in tight. So it's all one of those affirming things of like, oh, just go out and do be kindness and look out for other people, and it'll all work out. So, yeah. and Kermit was right there along with it. So yeah. I said to mention that <laughs> it was like, okay, you got your Kermit moment. Are you happy now? Are you happy you Can went? You? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So rehearsal day, this was on uh, the, the day before the big festival. So we had our producer uh, for the day, uh, uh, Dan, Dan. Lion Decker. He was awesome, wasn't he? Awesome, he, Dan awesome, best. Dan. He kept us moving. He helped us set up. He uh, got us on stage and, and sat in Willie's, on Willie's stool while we did our setup stuff with oh, our yeah. stool. Um, and, um, you know... Lucas, you were going to have to stand off stage, but but very close to the. You're on stage, but you're just in a little audio booth. Is that where you were? Yeah. Tell us what. Tell yeah. what, what was the idea with where you were going to be placed? I was right next to the main audio board, um, and but I, I I told them like I really would like to be able to see mm. what you guys were doing, just so. But I was prepared for anything. I was trying to prepare myself where because Michael told me he's like I don't know if they're going to have you back 
with the band just hiding, like just kind of mixed in with a bunch of people, if it's a whole band. Because I right. didn't know what it was. I didn't know if I'm playing with a group, if it's a solo thing or what. Right. And um, so I did say, like, <clears throat> yeah, it'd be great if I could just at least see the frog to yep. make sure that everything looks good. Because if we have that, to have the live banjo, we have to be able to make, you're so close with things if it's not synced up, then it's even a bigger miss than just having a recording. Yeah, and we were not hidden. Bradley and I were in full view no, of the, I of the that was audience. So cool. And similar to what we've done uh, several times before, we did it at Newport, we did it at uh, for the Hollywood Bowl shows and the O2 shows. The performers are in full view of the, of the audience who is the there. Audience. But, uh, and there were no, you know, usually there are big mag screens, big uh, video screens on either side of the stage or on one side of the stage that's kind of showing everything. But they didn't have that there for, uh, for this festival, but they were live streaming the, 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 the day. But uh, they weren't going to live stream this bit, so it was going to be a really special moment just for the audience there for, for that day. And uh, so Bradley that was a and thing. Were, like nobody yeah. knew, nobody knew that you nobody guys, the Kermit knew. was yeah. there. It was a That's huge right. secret. You had to have a whole code name and everything, and we had a very like closed off tent. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Don't give away the code name. What is the code yeah. name? I'm not. I know, uh, Mr. Know, Green. I test. think it is, isn't it, Mr. Green? I think isn't it? Yeah, we, we call him Mr. Green. Green. I don't know. We I, don't know. I, I never heard. Come up with a new one for the next one. Yeah. Now we will. Oh boy. But. So it was really kind of cool just to, it was daylight, full daylight. It was uh, while we were rehearsing and, you know, everybody on Willie's team was just awesome, you know, because, and all the people on stage, all of his crew, they were just so great. And And these are guys that have worked with legends Mm -hmm. for years. Mm -hmm. They were showing me pictures of Aerosmith and I mean, the Beach Boys, I think, and John Stamen, all these things. Oh my gosh. And I'm that was one of the things the the guy that was running sound um, that I was stationed next to. They were I was watching these gruff old good old boys that have been you know <laughs> yeah I've been on the road my whole life I've been working for Willie I've been you know I don't and they're like almost in tears seeing Kermit in person and it didn't matter yeah. if you guys were I mean Kermit when he comes alive he's he's there. There. And it's Kermit, and I'm wa- I'm watching. I I got to watch, and it almost just makes me tear up. I got to watch these guys see their light up with like children again. It's like they become and they were kids. So yeah. genuinely happy, yeah. so genuinely happy to see that. And the guy said, "I've we've worked with so many names. I got to tell you, Kermit is the biggest star we've <laughs> ever worked with." And they were just like. Floor. So it was so cool. I just felt like I was just a, a fly on the wall watching you, you, the Muppets team being mm-hmm. so excited to be in the presence of Willie and all the people there. And I'm watching Willie's team even more excited about these leg, this legendary performer. And yeah. uh, they would, and they would thank me too. They'd be like, thank you for, for being here. Thank you. For, <laughs> I was like, I'm thank you. For, <laughs> I'll thank them There was as a well, lot but, of thanking from everybody. Yeah, we were all so grateful to be there. They were so grateful to have us. Um, let's talk now, Bradley, you were kind of alluding to this rehearsal mm. the day before we got to actually have a rehearsal and met Willie Nelson. Can you kind of, can you paint the scene for us as what what we encountered that day from your point of view? Gladly. Exterior. <laughs> solar house. Exterior solar house day. Constant uh, haze. Constant haze. A haze, fills, a haze fills the area. We drive yeah. upon this. Well, now this is actually for real. We drive upon this like small sort of, it looks, looks kind of like a, like a really big guest house almost. And there's these mm-hmm. big solar panels. Um, and there's a couple of people sitting out on the porch. Um, and we get there and Willie's not there yet. So we, we sort of just sit and um, figure out, you know, what's basically going to be going on. And then we see um, Willie drive up in this beautiful Rivian, which is the first time I'd ever heard the name of that car before. But I thought it was a very <laughs> nice looking car. And this rehearsal, he gets out and he's just this cool guy, just very calm, very reserved, sort of quiet. And um, everybody is, is, you know, this happens for everybody else, but for, for, for us, for me and, and Lucas especially, 
this is our first time ever seeing Willie Nelson like in person live and right in front of us and he comes up and he's like shaking hands and he's like ready to go and we sit and this rehearsal was one of the most casual little things that I've ever been a yeah. part of just in general yeah. but here's here's the kicker right is you're sitting there and Kermit comes out and Willie sits down and Willie is using trigger for his rehearsal so this is Willie's famous guitar trigger yeah. if anybody doesn't trigger, know yes yes yeah. look it yeah, up um, it's, uh, it's look awesome. it up yeah two sound holes i have a toy of trigger now no joke and he um he's playing trigger so i get to see and hear trigger being played live uh micah his like son, three feet from him awesome, you're like three, three feet, feet from him no it was insane because my view when i look up is willie nelson trigger and kermit there and they're singing yeah. rainbow connection and i'm and i'm just sitting on the floor with the amount of money that people would pay for the experience that I had <laughs> is is you, you can't count it. Like there are so many people who would want to be in mm. that position, and specifically in the position of sitting three free, three feet from Kermit, three feet from from Willie, and mm. and listening to them sing Rainbow Connection. And here's the thing: it wasn't like a strict like we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. No, it was just like let's figure out the song, let's see how it's gonna flow, and we just sat there and played. Rainbow Connection like five times mm -hmm. sitting out on the porch and it just felt like we were all just having a jam session with Willie Nelson. It really did. It really did. And uh, you, you sort of mentioned this, but his Willie's son, Micah, was there playing guitar um, along with us. And so, you know, Lucas, you and, and Micah were kind of like trying to figure out a couple of changes and like what, what the chords were here and there. But you, yeah. it was really great. It was really cool to see you two talking uh, just kind of like swapping musical uh, repartee or whatever you. It was uh, it was funny to me because <laughs> I had stressed so much about. I, mean, I just I was so mindful about the the key it was in, and they were like, "Do it in E. We're gonna do it like just like Willie, you know, the whole thing." Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So for months, for months, for months, and I was drilling. I was sitting in this room drilling every day by my. But I've come early, and I would play it at least twenty times a day just to get so comfortable with it, yeah. and. I got to say, Matt, I love that song. I just love it. <laughs> it is a great and song. And I'm so, I just want to say, it's getting really old to hear people say, Kermit needs to sing another song. I know. You know what? When Willie wants to sing Rainbow Connection, you sing, you Rainbow, sing Rainbow Connection. Connection. I agree. Yeah. You know, it's, it is like, um, there are Muppet fans, they do kind of roll their eyes sometimes and go, oh, doing Rainbow Connection. I see. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's, first of all, it is an amazing song. It and is? most people in the world, most people don't see every single Muppet performance that the Muppets <laughs> no. do. They might catch one, maybe, if you're lucky. Uh, you know, it's really the fans. Those are the ones that see everything yeah. that we do. But for the I mean, large, by the public at large, they do not get to see us do everything that we do. So when we get an opportunity like this, yeah. something that might be a big splash like and, and bring a lot yeah. of happiness to people, a lot of smiles, it is Absolutely worth it, hands down. And plus, Willie Nelson recorded the song, so we should do that. Right. Yes. It was different. It's, it's the yeah. most appropriate time <laughs> so. to do it and not pitch back and say, like, well, can you do Happy Feet instead with Willie? Like, no, they're not going <laughs> no, to do Happy Can we do, can we do My Humps? Can we do My Humps? We'd really like something by Fergie. My yeah. Jumps. Uh, yeah. It's My Jumps. My jumps. It's about a jumps. Perfect. Yeah. I do have to give, like, um, a special a shout-out to Willie's wife, Annie. Oh, Annie. Who was... Yeah the best she was so wonderful she was so sweet she takes th this is the same the thing about everybody on willie's team that, from my observation is that they treasure this person they treasure willie they love him mm -hmm. fiercely mm -hmm. and they protect him they're very protective of him uh we were all masked to to, to protect yeah. you know, to keep protected yeah. which you know we were all totally fine with um and uh she, but annie was great and my my favorite moment my second favorite moment, my favorite moment was sitting next to Willie Nelson and just being there with him for that whole time. It was so cool. And to see him play Trigger like right in front of me. My second favorite moment would have been Annie, who gave me a big hug because we had met before on the 2015 series. And and uh, but she said, you need uh, you need a bandana. And she took one of her Willie Nelson bandanas and then she goes here. Do you know how to. Oh, let me just fold it for you. And she folded it for me. 
in the way that uh, Willie wears his bandana. She tied it and she handed it to me and I was like, oh, thank you so much. And I, later that night I put it on and it fit perfectly. It just like chunk, oh, went right course. on my head, like perfectly. I was like, how did she do that? It was great. So it was awesome to, to meet huh. Annie, uh, see Annie again. And, and uh, just that whole experience on the porch, yeah. you're right. It was like we were just sitting around uh, just having a little jam session of the same song over and over, but but that a jam session nonetheless. Still. Yeah. I'll never well, and I I, I led up to it, and I didn't even say what I was. So I kept I I got I distracted myself. The I, I was so focused on making sure I learned it right and all that stuff. Oh right. And the first thing that Micah said was, <laughs> "Oh right, what key you guys want to do this in?" And I was like, "No, <laughs> that's right, <laughs> that's right." Uh, it would have been it would have been totally fine, and maybe a little bit easier. Matt, I don't know if that was a stretch for. It's, vocally it's where you lower. normally sing it. It's very low for Kermit. It sounded yeah. really cool, though, but uh, I just wanted to say, and I don't know if you guys felt this or not, and you do this a lot more than... I, this is my first, you know, step into it, and maybe my last, probably a good chance I <laughs> did something wrong. But uh, it's okay. Um, I, I was so prepared to be <laughs> petrified, mm-hmm. stressed, and uh, shaking almost. I, mm-hmm. I was actually practicing trying to get my <laughs> you remember in oceans 11 when carl reiner you think he's been having a heart attack the whole time and you realize he's practicing for the big finale when he's trying to fake like ha- like yeah. passing out or something yeah i was trying to like uh stress myself out to make sure i could still play oh and uh, no matter stressed? what happened well in any way in any wow. distraction at all because i wanted because kermit's it doesn't matter what happens to me. Kermit's out there performing, and it's got to be perfect and real. And uh, I will, I'll, I'll tell you what happened later about that thing. That well, the oh, one yes. thing I okay, didn't yeah. plan for. Yeah. But uh, but I was just just to say that were that practice was so for me so relaxed. Kind of put you at ease. A, it felt didn't so it? good. Yeah. And I don't know if it was the haze that's there. Maybe that was what it was. Yeah, or so maybe. much. I don't know no. <laughs> no, but they really had a comfortable zone. And your yeah. your description of how safe and protective they made it for him. They never um I've 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 seen sometimes families will be protective in uh almost a, a, a defensive mm-hmm. mode to anybody mm-hmm. outside of it. They knew and, and it was because we were in a certain layer, I'm sure, of we had gotten that far that it was all yeah. okay. I mean, we were but at the solar house on the We, we right. were there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they were so gra- gracious yeah. and comfortable. And then it they was were. so interesting that we were having, he was le- learning the song again. He's like, let's listen to this a few times. And yeah, his yeah. wife's there holding the cell phone out just like yep. anybody would. <laughs> yeah. Learning the song again. You know, it, it was, it was awesome. And it was, uh, but the, our day did not end there. Uh, we had, the privilege of coming back that night and at the luck reunion, they do this the night before the show, they do this big potluck uh, dinner where a bunch of uh, renowned uh, chefs uh, make food for uh, it's like a charity uh, potluck dinner and and all the money goes to charity is my understanding of it. And, but that night Willie Nelson played a private show for these probably maybe 400 people. I don't know. There weren't a ton of people there, but it was this special group of people that were there getting to see Willie perform. And that to me was great. We, we all stood kind of right off stage there watching Willie and he had two of his sons. He had Lucas and Micah there and along with his band playing just like song after song, after song, after song. And his energy was amazing. Like we had seen him at two 30 in the afternoon. Here it was 10 30 at night. Yeah. And he was just like going, he was just, he was there and it was awesome. And one of my favorite part of this, and then I'm going to ask you if you had something that, to add to this, uh, my favorite part <clears throat> was somebody you know he's got a set that he's planned on doing right and somebody in between songs i think willie said something how's everybody doing and somebody yelled um blue skies and he went right into right as if it was part of his set yeah as if it was and it was not part of his set that night and it was so cool all the band just like jumped right in with him because um, he I evidently said, doesn't yes, like really eyes. doesn't really rehearse anymore. No. He comes out to that perform. So that it. that moment we had with him was special for a lot of reasons. It was oh, necessary, yeah. but uh, that wasn't something he he does. Doesn't normally do that. And yeah. so for him to just jump into that song, 
Yeah, it was because that's what I'm thinking about everything they had been telling us. Like, yeah, you know, he he has his 45 minute show. He has his one hour show. (laughs) Yeah, and that's it's one of the two. Like the cadence of what happened was like somebody said. uh, Blue eyes. Oh, blue eyes. And he literally went into it. I know it was crazy. It was so cool. Anyway, it was a great night. So, but that brings us to show day. But we are going to hold that uh, talking about show day until the next episode. So uh, stay tuned for that. And um, we'll see you next time. Below the Frame is a Welcome Matt production produced by me, Matt Vogel. The theme song was written by Stephanie DeBruzzo and myself and performed by my band, The Mighty Weaklings. Thanks to Dave Holtine at DaveHoltineDesign.com. He created our podcast art. You can follow me on Instagram at WelcomeMattV or search Matt Vogel. I post things every now and again, and it'll help you know when new episodes of this podcast, for example, are coming out. Thanks, everybody out there for listening. If you are sharing podcasts, please let somebody know about this one. And also, if you have a few seconds, just rate and review this one. I'm sure that that pleases the podcast gods or something. You can find Below the Frame wherever you get your podcasts. And we are now a video podcast on YouTube, so you can see our faces if that's something that you want to do. I am Matt Vogel, and we will see you next time when we go Below the Frame. Go, go, go.